All right, guys, cardiovascular disease is something that uh, many people are concerned about, particularly people that go on low-carb diets, higher-fat diets. Sometimes they'll see their LDL cholesterol rise, and they'll be concerned about that. And so this is a study that is, uh, I think, is just a really neat study. It just came out a little bit earlier this year. It is done in uh, Journal of American Medical Association, and it's called the Association of Coronary Plaque with low-density lipoprotein cholesterol levels and rates of cardiovascular disease events among symptomatic adults. Now, the lead author was a guy named Martin Mortensen. This is done in Denmark. They took around 25,000 people, and they stratified them by uh, actual imaging studies. So they had coronary artery calcium scans, which is a basically a CT scan of your heart, looking at the calcification or calcified plaques, which in their heart. And also they looked at uh, computerized tomography and geography, where they actually ran dye in there and further refined this to look for soft plaque. And they stratified that by LDL level. So whether you had really low LDL or really high LDL levels. And they had some really sort of interesting results here. And I think what I want to do is show you first a couple of the graphs that they got. And I think these are, these are really uh, uh, kind of fascinating uh, graphs to look at. And so if we look at sort of across the board overall, we see as our coronary artery calcium scan is zero over time, the cumulative event rate, so that would be either heart attack or death, was around 5% if, you're, if your score was zero. So if you had a real clean uh, coronary artery cal calcium scan, your score is zero. And if it was higher, say above 100, then that event rate went up to about 20%, so a significant increase. Now, remember, these are symptomatic people. These are people that already were having chest pain, right? They, weren't, they didn't have a heart attack yet. They obviously didn't die yet, but they were symptomatic. And so we don't know what happens with the asymptomatic people. My, my suspicion is it's even lower. But even if you already have chest pain, if you have a CAC score of zero, regardless of what your LDL cholesterol was, the, the uh, likelihood of having a cardiovas cardiovascular event, either a heart attack or death, 5%, and significantly higher, 20%, if you go up to a CAC score of above 100. Remember, this is symptomatic people. Now, as we, as we stratify this by LDL level, okay, you know, what is my LDL level? So they looked at people with an LDL below 77, so that's rock bottom, low as you can possibly get. And what did they find? They found that at a zero coronary artery, artery calcium scan, it wasn't about 5%. It was closer to 10% of those people with super LDL cholesterol had events, which is kind of interesting, right? So the lowest group of LDL cholesterol had a much higher than average risk for dying or having a heart attack. And, and again, and the same thing held true for if you had higher uh, coronary artery calcium score your event rate went up to about, looks like around 23%, so even an increase on the top on that. So let's go let's go across the stratum. And if you went to kind of mid-range, uh, LDL cholesterol 77 to 112 at zero CAC score, the, the event rate was about 5% again. At uh, 100, you know, 100 plus, the highest CAC score, your event rate was about 22% or so. If you go in the mid-range, 113 to 154, that's where I am. My, my LDL cholesterol is typically around 140, although you know, it varies from time to time. Uh, my likelihood, and I've got a zero CAC score, again, is 5%. Uh, if I were to have a high CAC score, uh, it would go up to about 18%, so still lower than those people with a, with, a, with a really low cholesterol. And then as we get even higher, 155 to 189, LDL cholesterol, oh, my God, your doctor's screaming at you to take statins, right? Your disease event is still around 5% with a zero CAC score. And at the top end, if you had high CAC score, it's still only about eh, 18%. And then finally, what about if you've got that super high LDL cholesterol? Okay, so if you have a zero CAC score, your disease of likelihood, symptomatic, you already have chest pain, the likelihood of you developing a heart attack or dying is still very low at 6%. And then at the higher rates, you know, at the, at the 100 plus, the likelihood of an event is pretty relatively low at 15%. And so they have a interesting discussion on this, and there's some there's some nuance behind this, and I think we should we should sort of talk about that uh, a little bit. And and so when we look at some of the uh, nuance stuff here, we see that what they're describing is across all levels. You know, and and the discussion of this, I think, is 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 quite interesting and worth, you know, reading to you guys. 
and I'll put the link for this study to see. Because what we see is, um, you know, what they found is people with zero coronary artery calcium scans had very low likelihood of soft plaque. It just doesn't happen. Now, it was slightly higher, to be honest, to, be, to, 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 to put this out. If you had a high LDL cholesterol, it was slightly higher that you would have some soft plaque, but it's still a very, very low likelihood. And again, remember, these are symptomatic people, people that already have chest pain. So the asymptomatic people, probably even less likely. And they stratified that by obstructive and non-obstructive lesions. So if you have like soft plaque, but it's not blocking anything, yeah, you're not likely to have an event. But if it is, then you're more likely to have, have an event here. And so this is, like I said, I'm going to read this to you real quick. The present study based on a large contempt contemporary cohort of consecutive symptomatic patients undergoing CCTA, that's the angiogram, provides important insights into the prevalence of non-calcified and calcified plaque and their associations with the occurrence of cardiovascular disease across the LDLC spectrum. To our knowledge, this study includes the largest published cohort to date of patients with LDLC levels of at least 190, super high, remember super high. Four key points emerge from our analysis. First, Atherosclerotic burden is heterogeneous across the spectrum of LDLC levels. So, can't tell. LDLC levels doesn't really accurately predict it. And risk is consistently associated with plaque burden. So, if you do have a lot of plaque, you're at higher risk, which makes sense. Second, we observed absence of plaque in 46% of patients with LDLC levels of at least 190. The proportion was similar to that in patients with lower LDLC levels. So, the same, high or low. Third, CCT ascertained absence of CAC indicated no detectable plaque in 86% of patients, including those with LDLC levels greater than 190. So if you have a zero CAC, the likelihood of you having soft plaque is very, very low. 87% of you don't have it, okay? Um, however, the prevalence of non-calcified plaque increased with higher LDLC levels. So there is that caveat there. Fourth, Absence of plaque and CAC was associated with low event rates across the LDLC spectrum, even when non-obstructive, non-calcified plaques were present. Notably, however, when non-calcified obstructive coronary artery disease was present, event rates were high, demonstrating that a CAC score of zero misses a small proportion of individuals at high risk. Taken together, our, resu our results support the use of CCTA results for risk stratification, including de-risking of symptomatic patients with high LDLC levels. This is important because such individuals are universally considered to be at high risk with very low LDLC C goals that can only be achieved by treatment with statins in combination with novel therapies to lower lipids. Among the large proportion of patients with LDLC levels of at least 190 who have no atherosclerotic plaque, the net benefit of such intensive treatment is questionable. All right, so for you guys who didn't follow that, so basically what it says is, if you have high LDL cholesterol, right, 190 or more, you may be at risk. You're probably not at risk, you know. What you can do is get these other studies, these imaging studies, whether it's a coronary artery calcium scan, that'll give you a pretty good idea, or, you know, it protects your symptomatic, you get an angiography, which makes sense. And so what it shows is that LDL cholesterol is not very predictive for heart disease. There's a slight, maybe a slight increase in certain situations, but overall, it's just not a very good. It's not a very good marker. You're far better to get the imaging studies. It's going to have far better likelihood of pre predictability. There are a lot of people out there that have high LDL cholesterols that have no evidence of heart disease and likely are unlikely to develop it. So interesting. So let me know what you guys think about this. I think this is a great study. Again, we're seeing more and more evidence out there showing that LDL cholesterol, as a standalone marker, is of very limited use, utility in predicting cardiovascular risk or cardiovascular disease progression. Anyway, you guys take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.